Hello, how are you guys doing today? This is Brayton, and today's video is going over why Dutasteride is better than Finasteride, more effective at treating male pattern baldness or androgenic alopecia, as well as benign prosthetic hyperplasia, or BPH for short, or enlarged prostate. Um, why Dutasteride is just more effective than Finasteride, and why it seems to be just the better treatment, and when it comes to side effects as well, uh, and why it seems to be more promising than Finasteride. So first, we'll hop right on in into finasteride here. What is finasteride? So finasteride is the kind of main prescription that's used for androgenic alopecia or male pattern baldness here. Uh, at higher dosages, yes, it's prescribed for BPH or enlarged prostate. Um, typically, in general, 5 milligrams there. Sometimes it can be around lower, depends on the titration. And then for male pattern baldness, it's usually prescribed for 1 milligram of finasteride daily. Sometimes it can be titrated, uh, or you can take like a 5 milligram Proscar, which is like the finasteride that's for BPH, and you can cut it in halves, and you can, you can titrate that way. Now, finasteride can be used at lower dosages as well for individuals who are experiencing some side effects, um, usually under a milligram daily or sometimes even every other day or weekly even. So, of course, this is still going to be pretty effective uh, crushing like systemic DHT levels. Of course, not to like the 70% systemic DHT, which one milligram of finasteride uh, daily does and the 40% scalp DHT inhibition. Uh, so, of course, it's still not as effective as one milligram dutasteride or finasteride daily. Uh, now, for the BPH dose or the 5 milligram finasteride daily, how mm, effective is this for, you know, male pattern baldness? Now, it crushes a good amount of systemic DHT. That's why it's more effective for, you know, BPH and enlarged prostate. Uh, but it doesn't really crush that much more scalp DHT, surprisingly. Um, so, in general, it's just not that effective, even if you want to increase the dose of finasteride, even though you would think, you know, if one milligram finasteride... Uh, daily is so effective if you just multiply it times five it'd be more effective right well sadly that's not the case all the time uh with every single drug so um sadly finasteride at five milligrams uh daily even is not going to be that effective for you know treating male pattern baldness uh for like aggressive case individuals for finasteride is going to work for the mass majority of people who are experiencing male pattern baldness so people with average hair loss genetics you know they're going to start to lose their hair in their late 20s uh 30s uh 40s etc finasteride one milligram daily or even lower dose than that still is going to be pretty effective for those individuals but if you have aggressive case of androgenic alopecia like early 20s teenagehood um you're going to have to push the envelope a little bit and sadly something like finasteride isn't going to be as effective even at the high five milligram dose here. Dihydrotestosterone is a hormone produced from testosterone through so the five alpha reductase enzyme. So why is dihydrotestosterone not really important in like adulthood? Now it is important during adolescence as well as fetal development for male secondary characteristics but in adulthood it just seems to be kind of like a nuisance for most individuals now that's why side effects for finasteride use is pretty low and not common but it, it can still happen for some people they may have a libido decrease or just fluctuations of libido and just sexual function now why is this now most of the time it's going to be because of the increase of testosterone to or aromatase activity so estrogen uh by around 15 percent there can be a fluctuation when you have you know crushed systemic dht by like 70 percent for most individuals cutting off dht isn't going to really do anything for it is one tenth of what your testosterone levels are and well testosterone levels can be from i think around depends on the age of course but typically for healthy individuals it's like uh, 400 nanograms maybe 300 to to around 900 or a thousand nanograms uh, and so, in general, having it one-tenth of that is dihydrotestosterone or maybe even less at times. Having it crushed is really not going to do much. There are multiple isoenzymes of 5-alpha reductase. Um, now, 5-alpha reductase type 2 is typically what's found on the scalp. So that's why, uh, and while well, finding other parts of the body, you still have a lot of body hair growth in general when using, you know, 5-alpha reductase uh, inhibitor finasteride. We'll talk about dutasteride later, but... So that's why, like, even for some individuals, uh, having crushed DHT can actually improve performance for you have a testosterone increase, as well as you can have more estrogen uh, increase as well. So estrogen is very important, especially for, you know, your cardiovascular system, neurological health, uh, you know, your hair too, your skin. Testosterone is like the main hormone for male virility, as well as just, you know, anabolic activity as well. So dihydrotestosterone uh, is really kind of 
useless kind of for most individuals. And But at the end of the day, there's some people out there who are going to say dihydrotestosterone is important. And, you know, there are a lot of, you know, conspiracies out there where it's like post-finasteride syndrome, uh, which I'm not going to say is not real or anything. I want to, you know, disclose that. But, you know, obviously, I think sometimes there's a lot of hypochondriacs out there that can may diagnose themselves with conditions when it comes to post-finasteride syndrome. Uh, but at the end of the day here, uh, that is just what I find in what I see <laughs> on literature and my thesis at the end of the day here. I don't want to speak for anybody. Uh, if you want to experience your comment, your experience with, you know, any 5-alpha reductase inhibitor or finasteride, you know, feel free. But, uh, in my opinion, I believe that finasteride is a pretty safe, uh, drug, especially just for use for hair loss. Um, but we're going to get into dutasteride and why it's, better uh and more effective at treating male pattern baldness than finasteride uh, so yeah we'll hop right on in so now on to dutasteride so dutasteride is prescribed typically for bph or enlarged prostates the 0.5 milligram dose a uh, daily also known as avidart uh, which is the common brand name for it it is the more potent 5 alpha reductase inhibitor so it crushes more dht systemic dht i believe around 90 percent systemic dht and around 50 percent scalp dht so a bit stronger than finasteride the 0.5 milligram dose of dutasteride daily it is more potent than finasteride uh but at the end of the day here with dutasteride the dose can be increased and the effects can be way better so uh comparatively to finasteride which is the, you know the one milligram dose seems to be just better in general comparatively to the five milligram dose daily uh they're around even though they're almost identical to the effects dutasteride can be titrated up to i believe or even five milligrams but around 2.5 milligrams is where it seems to be the most effective and just best for you know the dose for five milligrams is only maybe a couple like one or two percent like more effective which really isn't worth it uh while 2.5 milligram dutasteride is going to crush almost 100 percent systemic dht and around 80 percent scalp dht now when you have something like that you even with the most aggressive case of androgenic alopecia even with like usually the most aggressive case if you start early enough and you start using 2.5 milligrams dutasteride you will most likely be saved now if you have you now the very 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 <laughs> low percent of people who have like the extreme of extreme energetic alopecia now that may still not be enough where you still have like 20 percent scalp dht uh there can be some other treatments that be compounded as well uh but i guess we can get into that a different video for this is not for extreme cases of energetic alopecia this is for like the aggressive cases dutasteride though in general is going to be more effective because it crushes more scalp dht compared to finasteride now the side effects are even very similar they're not almost they're not like oh dutasteride is going to cause more side effects because it crushes the type 1 and type 2 isoenzymes of 5 alpha reductase now finasteride doesn't cut off the type 1 uh, isoenzyme of 5 alpha reductase um dutasteride is more effective at type 2 and type 1 so of course there may be some you know thought you know hey there probably be more side effects with dutasteride because well it's crushing the type 1 isoenzyme which usually is found in things like this the skin maybe liver and brain as well uh but it just seems that the side effects are almost kind of identical to finasteride which cuts off the type 2 isoenzyme the dutasteride is going to be just better in general um and i mean why not choose it in the, well, the long run if you are i mean i guess if you don't have a if you have like you know if you're going bald in like your 40s or like late 30s and finasteride will work just fine or maybe if you're vegan as well um since uh dutasteride is in a gelatin capsule uh, there is really kind of little to no reason to use finasteride when you could use something like dutasteride which is more effective now of course it's like it's harder to get dutasteride prescribed for male pattern baldness especially in america so hopefully at the end of the day here they'll you know in the future dutasteride will be prescribed in america for you know or very easily obtained in america for male pattern baldness since it's just more effective so dutasteride since it crushes more systemic dht it is going to have an increase of testosterone and estrogen by i believe around 20 percent or maybe even a little more even even uh, it depends on the dose of dutasteride as well uh you know maybe like 1.1 1. 1 milligram or 2.5 milligrams dutasteride 
but the 0.5 milligram to test right curses a ton of systemic dht so that's an increase of you know testosterone now there could be that could mean in theory hey there could be more side effects because of the maybe an imbalance may happen if you're prone to it uh no that's a possibility but it just kind of seems that like in the literature that do test right 0.5 milligrams and finasteride one milligram daily are very similar when it comes to side effects but as you've seen in the literature uh, we don't know for sure. It's not set in stone. So um, at the end of the day, I think that 0.5 milligrams dutasteride is just going to be the most effective hair loss treatment for most individuals. If you have an extreme case, maybe 2.5 milligrams dutasteride. Now, some people may argue, hey, that could be less safe and there could be more side effects down the line or maybe shrink that could be shrinking your prostate too much. Now, it could be an argument, but we just don't have that much literature on, you know, 2.5 milligrams dutasteride daily. But it seems to be safe in the meantime, and it's going to be the most effective treatment for people with the most aggressive androgenic alopecia who really want to keep their hair. And I believe at the end of the day, if you really want to keep your hair and it's like part of who you are and you want to be yourself without it and you just really want to keep it, I think something if you have an aggressive case of androgenic alopecia, the 2.5 milligram dutasteride may be the way for you until maybe uh, future treatments uh, arrive or, you know. But yeah, in general, uh, you're probably not going to have an aggressive case of androgenic alopecia. So 0.5 milligrams to test, right? It seems to be the best 5-alpha uh, reductase inhibitor. Uh, and especially mixed with other treatments like minoxidil too, maybe a ketoconsole shampoo or, you know, topical antiandrogens uh, that help bind to the androgen receptor on the scalp. That don't make sure that DHT doesn't bind to the hair follicle, the androgen receptor in the hair follicle. Yep. That could be a thing too. In general, that is kind of my conclusion here at the end of the day. Uh, if you guys disagree with me or if you guys have any input or anything you've seen in the literature that I may have missed or, you know, you guys or agree with me even or want to add your kind of experiences and, you know, this and that, uh, feel free to leave in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm and uh, leave a like if you enjoyed. Uh, and yeah, uh, I think that's all for today. So <laughs> anyways... Uh, I will talk to you guys later, so.